there's an app for that. In 2009, Apple gave us the iPhone 3G and uh, in its ad campaign gave us this phrase that I think has kind of stuck with our collective consciousness for quite a while. My name is Dennis Todd. I'm a senior sales engineer at Innovative Interfaces, and I'm going to present to you an introduction to Innovative Mobile. What is Innovative Mobile? It is a mobile app from Innovative Interfaces for your patrons. It supports both iOS and Android devices. It's available for both Polaris and Sierra libraries, and it's available for both single site and multi-site library systems. So city systems, county systems, and even multi-type library consortia. Some of the key benefits, it's fast and easy to set up. Fast in that we can implement it within weeks versus months for some of the applications from some of our competitors. Features linked accounts, so library patrons can link their devices with family members, for example, all on their own, irrespective of whatever linking may be set up within the ILS. It's very customizable. There's a web-based content management system that underlies all the admin and customization and content uh, definition. And with that, the library can define menu layout, app colors. They're all customizable by the library and to a certain extent by the patrons themselves. It supports 20, per, 20 plus languages. You define for your library which languages you want supported. And then if you have a patron who downloads uh, the app and their phone is natively one of those supported languages, then the app is automatically set to default to the language that's the default language on their device. It empowers self-service, which is really critical in this time of COVID. It makes a lot of our patron contact contactless, and it turns those uh, mobile devices into self-service machines, essentially. So perform the same kinds of functions on your mobile device that you might use a self-check for. We're going to do a live demo of Innovative Mobile. But uh, just a few sample screens as kind of a uh, high level view of, in this case, the uh, branding and personalization that you can do. So here's an example, a comparison, St. Paul Public Library on the left and Dublin City Council on the right. And for each one, we're showing their, their home menu, their home screen, if you will, and some examples of content that they provide. And you can uh, see the colors, fonts, logos, branding is all very different between those two sites. And that's all done very simply using the content management system, the admin system provided to the library. Here's an example of uh, the rich feature set just uh, the, for the feature my account, uh, a bunch of sample screens. And we'll look at these uh, in action in a little bit. But again, you can see how much functionality is available to through Innovative Mobile. And here's uh, just one sample screen of that content management system. Again, it's web-based and uh, very, very easy to use. And we'll take a quick look at that as well as we go along. So let's now do a live demo of uh, Innovative Mobile, or at least a recorded demo of, of Innovative Mobile. But we'll look at some of the features uh, in action. We're going to look at the innovative mobile app currently in use at St. Paul Public Library, a Sierra library. And let's pretend we're a patron and we haven't downloaded the app yet. So I have an iPhone. This is my iPhone. And I come to the App Store and do a search for St. Paul Public Library. And the innovative mobile app is branded as St. Paul Public Library. Now, I've already downloaded the app, so my option is to open. But of course, uh, if I were a patron coming for the first time, wanting to download the app, it would say get. And in the matter of a minute or two, I would have the app downloaded to my iPhone, to my mobile device, whether it's iPhone or Android. Now that I've installed the app, all I need to do, of course, is tap on the icon on my mobile device. And there's St. Paul Public Library. Let's take a look at some of the features. Right up at the very top is the ability to search the catalog within the app. So I'm going to do a search for Harry Potter. 
No demo is complete without a Harry Potter search. And it performs the search and the results come back again, staying within the app. If I'm interested in uh, a DVD, notice down at the bottom, there's the ability to filter my searches. So I'm going to search, uh, I'm going to click down there, and we're going to select format. And right there at the bottom, I'm going to say DVD and apply my filters. And there we go. And if I'm interested in that Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire DVD, I can tap on it. And there's bibliographic information, there's item level information, and right here is the option to place a hold. And of course, I would have to be a patron at St. Paul Public Library, but we'll show you that process a little bit later on our demo system. Here we are back at the main menu of the app. We performed an initial search. Now, under that first search option, there's a second way to search the catalog. Let's say I'm over at a friend's house and they recommend this great book called My Dear Hamilton and they're still reading it so they can't loan it to me. So I'm curious whether the library has it or not. So I tap on scan ISBN barcode and turn the book over to the ISBN barcode, scan it, and I find out that in this case, St. Paul Public Library has both the book and the ebook. So I tap on ebook and there's a very nice prominent button to download the ebook. Let's skip the My Account feature for right now and talk about the nearest libraries feature that's a standard feature of the innovative mobile app. So St. Paul Public Library is a multi-site library system. And if I as a patron tap on nearest libraries, I see all of the libraries, all of the branches for St. Paul Public Library. And you as a library system can decide whether you want these to appear alphabetically or truly whether you want them in geographic proximity to where the patron is standing right at the moment. It looks like St. Paul has chosen to list things alphabetically, but they've gone in to every branch location and I'm going to tap on Highland Park. They've gone into every branch location and fleshed out the branch information very nicely. So we've got an image for each location. Under about, there's hours, there's location, contact information, and I can actually tap on view on map, and it opens up Google Maps or Apple Maps, whichever mapping uh, solution you're using. And then we say done, and they're right back to that nearest location entry for Highland Park. If I tap on visit website down there near the bottom, then it links out to the Highland Park page on the St. Paul Public Library website. What's really nice is even though we've linked out to an external web page, because that web page is responsive, it lays out very nicely and it doesn't actually bring up a separate tab. All I have to do to go back a page in the app is tap done up in the left corner. And we're still within the innovative mobile app. Here we are back again at the main menu. I think you can see by now that all of the features of the app kind of hang off of this main menu. We won't look at all of the different features, but I do want to tap on social down there at the very bottom to show you that this menu structure is not just kind of single tiered. That when the user taps social, we've got now sub menus for the different social networking apps, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. You can actually, as you customize, and we'll show you how and where you do this, but you can actually customize the, the secondary menu. And then of course you define, if I tap on fit, uh, Facebook, for example, you define where that secondary menu goes. And in this case, of course, it links out to St. Paul's Facebook page. And just like we saw a second ago for the nearest libraries when we went into a branch page, this has actually now linked out to Facebook, but it's still wrapped by the app. So if I tap done up in the upper left corner, we're right back to that submenu for social. And then we can go into Instagram, for example, 
And the same thing, Instagram comes up still within the app. And when I'm done, I tap done in the upper left. And I'm right back where I started on that sub menu. One last thing about the basic user interface here in the Innovator mobile app. If you look down at the bottom of this first page of the home page, there's three dots, which is a cue that there's more content. You're not limited to just one page of, of menu options. So if I swipe left, I get to the second page. And most of these options, by the way, are library defined options put in customized by St. Paul Public Library. If I tap on their calendar option, for example, it links out actually to a uh, Biblio Commons page. And I can, of course, view the page, use the web app. But then when I'm done, again, as we've seen a couple of times already, I can tap in the upper left corner on done, and we're right back to that menu page that we, that we launched from. St. Paul Public Library has been a great example of a live in production innovative mobile site. We're going to actually look at another site to compare and contrast. So I'm going to leave St. Paul Public and we're going to go to Danbury Library. So where St. Paul Public was a Sierra library, Danbury Library is a Polaris library. And you can see right away some dramatic uh, differences between the two. It's not that one's Polaris and one's Sierra, because actually uh, St. Paul could look exactly like this if they wanted to, uh, including that content carousel that we see scrolling there under new books. Uh, if you're a Polaris library, uh, you, you're familiar with the concept and, and the term content carousel. And I can tap on more. And they've got a couple of content carousels in here. But these are available to Sierra libraries as well. Uh, on Polaris, they're based on um, record sets and or bib IDs. Sierra, they're based on either bib IDs or review files. So everyone can have that scrolling content if they want. But it's just an example of one thing that um, St. Paul doesn't have that Danbury did decide to implement. And it's just all a matter of that customization. So you can see, though, the difference in branding, the difference in fonts, in colors. Uh, the icons are incredibly colorful. One interesting difference is um, there's pages and pages of content. Danbury has chosen so that the user scrolls up and down rather than swipes left and right to look at the different options. And again, that's just library choice. Uh, different menu, some similar menu options, some different menu options. Uh, one thing I find interesting about Danbury is here among their options is that ability to look at online resources. So I tap on that icon right there. And this is that submenu con uh, concept that we showed you with the social entries over on St. Paul, but they've customized uh, a submenu set of online resources. And not only do they have an icon and the title, but in the submenu heading kind of they provide some basic information as well. Description of each online resource. And again, that's something that you can take advantage of in the uh, content management system when you customize those and set them up. So that's Danbury. Now that we've looked at a couple of great examples of how you can customize your implementation of Innovative Mobile, I want to bring up my demo system and look at some My Account related stuff. And I need a demo system to be able to actually show you a patron account. So one of the first things to notice is this Innovative Mobile implementation looks fairly similar to those we've already looked at. And I've got my menu options. Some of them are similar, the same. Some of them are different. Look down at the very bottom of the screen. In the bottom left corner, it says My Barcode. This is an electronic barcode. And you'll notice I tap, and there's a scannable barcode. Now, what's interesting, and this will lead us to our next part of the discussion, is I can scroll between Amy Fowler and Sheldon Cooper. Amy and Sheldon have chosen to link their accounts. 
So I'm going to close that and we're going to click on my account and I can either go up to the hamburger menu up there in the upper right or click on the my tap on, I'm sorry, <laughs> tap on the my account option. And here's Amy's my account. So this is, uh, this is my iPhone, but we'll pretend it's Amy's iPhone right now. And we see a lot of the traditional my account content, but there's some unique things here. Look about two thirds of the way down, there's an option for linked accounts. This is where Amy and Sheldon have come in and you'll notice there's an add option in the upper right corner of the screen. And they chose to add Sheldon as a linked account. And when you link accounts, and let me point out, this is very different than the linking that may happen in the ILS. So whether or not you've got associated patrons uh, within Polaris, for example, that's not affected here. That's not reflected here. They have to specifically go into the app and choose to add people. And when you say you want to add link someone else to the account, you have to have their card. And of course, uh, hopefully that person is standing right there and they provide their pin to validate that. So Amy and Sheldon have chosen to link their accounts. Now, because they're linked, we saw that here in the app, on Amy's app, she could cycle between her own uh, barcode and Sheldon's. Now, if I look at any of the other My Account options, like checkouts, there at the very top, we get a list of everything that Amy has checked out. And if I scroll down, there's a box where Amy can look at her checkout history. But because their accounts are linked, she can see what Sheldon has checked out as well. And at the bottom of what Sheldon currently has checked out, there's a box for his checkout history. So in my account, virtually everything is that way. If I tap on holds, we see my holds, which is Amy's holds. And as I move on down, then there's Sheldon's holds as well. So it really acts as if you've got both accounts right here. Lots of functionality. You'll notice I tapped on all in and we can do many of the things that you do uh, within Polaris. Change pickup locations, suspend holds, cancel holds. Lots of functionality, almost too much to, to go through. But let's look at fines. We see Amy's fines and then Sheldon has a $5 fine as well. So lots of really deep, rich functionality here. If I look down at preferences, about two-thirds, four-fifths of the way down, Amy has the ability to personalize her experience within the app. So she can change the icon order, for example. So if she would like to see library hours right up at the very top, she can move that. If she wants to change the, uh, the flow of menu options from scroll to flow, she can do that. Also, second to last down there is the option to choose language. The library chooses a default language, but if Amy would like to uh, have her interface in Spanish, for example, she just has to tap on that. And if she wants it in Polish, she taps on that. And the language, we just tap the button up at the top and the language changes. I mentioned this earlier, but if Amy were a native French speaker, for example, and her phone were set to French, when she got the app from the App Store, the app, the setting here that we're looking at would be initially set to French. So that's kind of a nice detail. Here we are back at the home page of my demo system. And you may have noticed there's an interesting menu option that we didn't see at St. Paul or Danbury, Connecticut. And that's the ability to do self-service. There is a menu option right in the middle there. And then down in the bottom right, there's also a link. So Amy wants to check out a copy of Steve Jobs that she found on shelf. So she taps on self-service. And there's the option to check out. Now your library can also offer check-in in which case there would be two big bold uh, buttons there, one for checkout and one for check-in. We don't find many libraries in North America opting to allow libraries to check, or sorry, patrons to check in their own material. 
but it's it's popular in Europe. Anyway, Amy wants to check out this copy of Steve Jobs that she found on shelf, and she scans the barcode. And the checkout is successful. And then there's a button right there at the bottom where she could continue if she had more titles she wanted to check out. But it's it's really that simple. It works with both barcodes and RFID. In the case of RFID, it not only checks out the material, but it flips the security bit. So I borrowed one item. OK. And you may have noticed before. When I go to my Amy's My Account, there's an option about halfway down that is self-service receipts. So these are all the receipts from checkout sessions, uh, the most recent one at the top and others on down. While we're here looking at Amy's account, let's go back to holds and talk about curbside pickup. You may have noticed when we were looking at holds before that there is this nice big prominent button at the top that says curbside pickup. That only appears if your library has added on the curbside pickup functionality. Now, as we look at Amy's list, down at the bottom, there are three titles that are actually held. They're on the hold shelf waiting for pickup. And Amy could come in and pick them up in the traditional manner, but she's going to try the library's curbside pickup service. So as she taps that green button, she sees the three titles that are ready for pickup. Now, before she says she's on her way to the library, let's add in the staff side of things. Now, what you see on the right side here is the click and collect dashboard that library staff use to manage the curbside pickup sessions. When I come to work and begin my shift, I enable the click and collect dashboard, and that tells the software that I'm ready to manage curbside pickup sessions. So Amy's cell phone is still there on the left, and she taps, I'm on my way, to pick up those three items. Additionally, she can provide some ETA information. The system can either use uh, location services, or if the patron doesn't want to use location services, they can tap, say, five minutes. And you'll notice Amy's session over here in the staff side of things gets automatically updated based on what Amy puts in. Now, staff realize that Amy's going to be here in the next five minutes, so they drop down her session, and there are the three titles that are in the library on the hold shelf, and staff go pull those from the hold shelf and let the app know. And when they've all been packaged and ready for curbside pickup, Amy's session moves over to this middle column. It moves from en route to ready, and then at some point, again, look over to the left on Amy's cell phone. She taps, I'm here. And that lets my dashboard know, and her session moves over to arrived. And the only thing left to do now from the library staff standpoint is to open that up and check out those three held items to the patron. And they're checked out using SIP, just like any other, say, self-check workstation. Or you can use your ILS to check them out as well. Finally, let's say we want to modify our instance of Innovative Mobile and show you how easy it is to use the content management system to make changes. So we've got just a few menu options here on our demo system. Let's say the library has decided to add another menu option for homework help. Here's a look at the Innovative Mobile Administration Tool, or the Content Management System, as we're fond of calling it. It's web-based. And if I'm going to add a menu option, I first need to define content. We're going to add new content. And we simply say, what's the nature of the new content? And we're going to link to a live web page. And all we really need to do on the content page, then, is provide the URL. We're going to borrow a page from Westerville Public Library and give it a name. And we're just going to call this Homework Help. So now that we've got a bit of content, we create it. And all we have to do now is add it to the menuing structure. So I've gone into my template. And I open up this hierarchy. And this ought to look familiar. These are the menu options on my, uh, my demo system. 
and we are going to say, I want a new menu option, and we're going to call it, hello, homework help. And we say create, and now it adds a node, if you will, right here at the bottom of the hierarchy. And I click on that, and I can edit that tab. First of all, we need to say it's got to have an icon. Looks a lot better when we've got an icon. And here's our possible icons. This is homework help. So I'll bet you there's a graduate tab in there. And I can choose from any of these mortar boards, for example. I'll just choose that one for fun. Apply it. And now all we need to do is say, what is this tab going to have? I've predefined a content item and homework help that we just defined appears in the dropdown. And that's all we need to do, unless we wanted to use fancy icons, fancy colors. But we'll just take the defaults and say save. And now when we look at our home screen definition, homework help is right there. And we've done our job. And actually, our app is updated. So let's go over and take a look at what it looks like. Here we are back at the app, still logged in as Amy, and we want to see our new menu option. So the new menu option will either appear the next time Amy comes into the app, or if she comes into her preferences and says reload because she's made whatever change or we've made whatever change, then as soon as the content is reloaded, now we see our homework help option. And let's tap on it and see where it goes. And it does like we told it to. It We link to the uh, homework help page at Westerville Public Library. And Westerville has a nice responsive design website. So it displays very nicely within Innovative Mobile. And all I have to do is tap that Done option in the very upper left corner. And we're right back in our innovative mobile application. So that's everything we wanted to show you in a live demonstration. Why choose innovative mobile? We can implement it quickly. There's a lot of customization and personalization options, and they're easy to do. And there's great, pay, great patron service features like self check and curbside service. Thanks for your time today. This is where I would ask for questions, but uh, we'll get to that later, won't we?